three-course frozen dinners, the most complete frozen meal ever put in a single package. Complete from soup to dessert. <coughs> it's the new Swanson three-course dinner. Gives you meat and vegetables plus soup and dessert. I don't know about you guys, Here's but I the can't take any more of this. This madness has got to stop. It is over. I can't agree with you more, Jacob. So our parents and grandparents appreciate the wholesome predictability of the 1950s, especially the monotonous, bland uh, 1950s TV dinner. But society has evolved, and so should the TV dinner. Yeah. Uh, it was an era of 1950s, an era of stereotypes. Uh, take it to an uh, example of this advertisement. The chef has everything in the book. That's what wives are for. <laughs> it was an era of limited choices. Uh, can you say four? <laughs> It was an era of conformity. Who didn't want to have a house just like their neighbor and their other neighbor and their neighbor two blocks down? And it was an era of predictability. You had your vegetables, your protein, and your cars, which only really consisted of string beans, peas, and carrots, chicken, and your lovely dessert with your mashed potatoes. But what are we? We are an era of innovation, of yeah. young entrepreneurs, <laughs> Facebook, Groupon, WordPress, all in their 20s. We're also an era of customization. We want what we want and now and how we like it pertaining to our lifestyle, like Yogalicious, Chipotle, food trucks, the counter. And we're an era of technology. Who doesn't have a smartphone? Who doesn't want a tablet? Who doesn't want to keep up with the latest trends to be one of those first movers? So you may be asking, what does this have to do with our food? All of these trends carry over into what we want to eat. We want innovative food ideas. We want things that are changing. We want things that are new. We don't want to eat the same things over and over, day in and day out. We want new choices, and we want new choices right now, whether it's piecing different meal options together. Um, some people now, most people, um, admit to eating appetizers for dinners when they go out to dinner. Um, so what does this all add up to? We have innovation, customization, and technology. There's a solution, and we found it. It's the Munchbox! Munch <laughs> this munch is something that comes out of the Munchbox. The Munchbox is the newest innovation in food. What it is is its own standalone box where users can use the touch screen to swipe whatever two or three appetizer type combinations of food to um, a variety of endless possibilities to have their ideal meal for them being on the go. And one of the beauties of this product is, is that since it's its own box, it's open 24-7. And that solves a lot of the problems with people with active lifestyles wanting to eat when they would like to eat. Okay, so who's our target market? Based off everything we just learned, we narrowed our target market down to three different types of people. College students, young professionals, and everybody else who is sick of the ordinary. <laughs> <laughs> so what is our target market thinking? We asked them, and they definitely told us. So when we asked them what kind of frozen things they're buying, they're all buying single items, as you can tell. They're buying frozen burritos, frozen pizza, single frozen items. Now, what are, they per what are their perceptions of frozen meals? Um, it was resounding. Um, they hate them. Uh, and um, we, they were not shy about what they said about what they think about frozen meals. But the big part of this is when we asked them if there was an option to customize their meal and have it be somewhat their choice, what they're eating, three-fourths of them were willing to pay more. So for every problem, there is a solution. People were buying single frozen food items and piecing them together to make their own meals. That adds extra time. Those costs add up. So we are solving that problem by putting it all in one place. Okay, so where are we going to launch this much box? Our plan is to uh, launch it in the Los Angeles <coughs> to start, to keep costs down and to kind of see how things are going. Um, eventually, after year two and three, we plan to expand to the rest of Southern California, San Diego, Orange County, etc. Where am I going to get this munch box? Great question. So in order to get the munch box, you have to actually apply, which is unique. Actually, well, Redbox does it. But you have to apply to have the Munchbox put on your premises. So the thing with this is that once you apply, we have to approve to have the Munchbox put there. If we approve it, though, we'll put it there for free. We'll install it. We'll deliver it. And all you have to do is just provide energy costs. Once you do that, it's ready for hungry customers to eat. How am I going to get this Munchbox? Where are you going to get this Munchbox? Where is this Munchbox? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so the first place, and we talked about how college students are the first uh, big target market for us. So we want to put it on college campuses. The thing with college campuses, though, is that a lot of them have food contracts with things like Sodexo. So our solution to that is to give college kid colleges a 50% cut of our revenues, which you've worked in and actually works out because they're a smaller market out of the bigger scheme. Uh, we, go, we want to go to places like LMU, USC, all these places. The second place we want to put it is in front of convenience stores and pharmacies. Uh, we think that if, we, if they uh, apply to have it put in front of the store and we put it there, it will drive business to their store, but it also provides something that they do not provide inside. On the other hand, we do not want to put it in grocery stores or in front of grocery stores because they are directly competing. We don't think it worked out that way. And then finally, we want to put it in front in local companies, just like these. Um, we found throughout the semester. <laughs> we found throughout the semester that everybody, a lot, I mean, a few people, when we were there, we were there late at a lot of these companies. There were people working late. There was no cafeteria open. There was no food option available. We think it's a great asset to have in your company. So that's why that's the third place we want to put it. And we actually may give you guys a little cut to give you an incentive. Because it may be competing with cafeterias and Google, et cetera. Skip. OK. Um, our business model. I'm going to go to the next slide. This is kind of a summary after three years. So after three years, we hope to have 750 machines spread across Southern California. Uh, so some crazy math, which I did in my head, We're projecting $15 million in revenue, uh, about $8 million in variable costs, $22,500,000 in fixed costs, for a total profit of about $2 million after three years. This goes up exponentially the first year we're barely breaking even. Um, yeah. So now that we have this innovative, great pro uh, product, we want to let you know what our media objects are and how we're going to get this out there. So first, we want awareness. We want people to have um, awareness of what a Munchbox exactly is. And we want it to be just as trendy as, hey, want to go to a Munchbox? As, hey, want to get Froyo? And we also want engagement with our um, consumers. This is new, and we know that. So not only do we want our consumers to try um, this food, we also want them to say, wow, I can't believe that's frozen. And finally, we want to sell. So we are going to be focusing on social media, and that's because our target market is all over social media. Um, uh, and in order to do that, we want to get as big of a following as possible. So we want everyone at college campuses, all our local businesses, to like our Facebook, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram. And the more followers we have, the more outreach we're going to be able to give um, with promotions and events such as uh, the um, Venice uh, NBA ESPN Rise. It's a basketball tournament. So we want to team up with uh, events like that, Six Man or the US Open Surfing, uh, which is held in Huntington Beach. Um, but they already have, oh my gosh, they already have a high traffic uh, following, and so it wouldn't be that hard to get people out there because people already go. Um, and to let them know that our munch box is there, and we want to let them try our food. Uh, we want to do clever uh, statuses to engage with our customers. We want to create a trendy munch hour. It's after lunch but before dinner. So we want people to send us what's in their munch box and what combination they've made um, with a chance to win uh, their, next free app or their next appetizer for free on us. Um, also is our Twitter, uh, which we want to continue with our clever remarks um, in order to engage with our younger uh, target market. Uh, we want to create trendy words like hashtag munchbox, hashtag munchies, hashtag uh, munch hour. Um, finally, both of these are going to be linked to our munchbox website, which um, has the conveniency of going to find a munchbox near you, typing in your um, zip code, and using Google Maps to find a munchbox that's close to you. Jacob. So the final way that we would interact with our users are, is through YouTube through a variety of videos to explain who we are as a brand, to connect with them, who we are behind the scenes, what we do as a company, and um, to kind of explain to them who we are because it's a new concept, it's a new idea. So as kind of like a storyboard in motion, this is an, one kind of an example of how we could explain ourselves to college students. Um, I think we need to put this play.
<coughs> so we know going to a college campus, it's, you know, there's really only a couple food options to go to. Um, the lair and um, the cafeterias on campus, around college campuses, are pretty consistent um, with what they offer. And we don't want to be told what we are supposed to eat and have the same options all the time. We don't want to be told what's traditional to eat, unconventional. It's it doesn't taste good. <laughs> and it's gross. We don't want to have the school tell us what we want to eat. We're not living at home anymore. We can feed ourselves. So we're not going to put up with it anymore. We want, Stand up and fight. We want more options. <laughs> we want to be able to customize our options for the California lifestyle, the variety of foods that we have available to us. Being Southern California residents, it's all available to us for the active lifestyle. And we're going to cut out Jacob there because we're running out of time. Oh, it's just me. Okay, so um, in addition to the website and everything else we talked about, we want to do a mobile app which features the same uh, features as the website, including our locations, our menu, which is going to be changing monthly. Um, you can order and create your meal like on the, on the mobile app or on your smartphone and then go pick it up by just scanning it, which will make uh, things easier. You can redeem coupon codes and we'll tell our story and things like that. So just a, it's a, an additional way to engage with our customer. And then, um, okay, for our media spending, uh, we want to focus on the summer months. We think with all those events that Haley described, we think the summer months are the biggest time to actually get this push out there. So like I said, we want to focus a lot on social media and a lot on these out of home sponsorships of these events, things like that. So no traditional media, no TV, no radio, no newspaper. We don't think that will sell. We think putting the food in these people's mouths will sell the food. Uh, so we measure our performance by our Facebook likes, our Twitter and uh, Instagram followers, our YouTube views, um, the number of coupon codes are redeemed, and our sales volume in the next three years. So, um, Compared to our competitors, we are high convenience and a little bit um, in between with price, but especially with home cooked meals, which most of us don't have that much time to do all the time, we feel like ours is a very um, good option based off of the market. But why take our word for it? We asked LMU students what they thought and they're going to tell you as well. Is it always like a protein, a carb, or a vegetable, or just a little bit of a mix of a, like a ton of different things until you're full? Um, I usually have protein like chicken and a vegetable like spinach, but I think it's a fun idea to um, question different options. <laughs> kind of like different restaurant ordering outside there. So you're given options of two or three apps. Why would you prefer the uh, the munchbox over the layer? Um, I think I prefer the munchbox. It sounds a lot more convenient closer to me and it's healthy. Uh, I usually do it at night when you're trying to get dinner and go to while it's all like super fat and fried and it's uh, options. Well, I, I, think, I think it's a great idea because I first created some money box. <laughs> because, you know, all the food on campus isn't very good. Especially, you know, kids go out, get a little drunk, they just want a money box. And, like, <laughs> <laughs> struggling with you only had a three most businesses like have a three-year plan right. you had a three-month media plan so what happens after June <laughs> well we think that with a big push over the summer like all those events that we talked about um, we think that's the biggest time to really get out there and then we'll continue posting on social media but that's not gonna be our cost that's not we're not gonna be you know putting all of our costs into that so we'll continue <laughs> it but that's not where all the costs are gonna be and also the big push during summer is summer events since we are in Southern California it's great weather the main point with ours is if they try it, we know they're going to get um, get it again and again because we are um, 
making sure we have unique food options that taste good. So if we're out there at these kind of events in Southern California weather, um, they have a good option to try. Um, for, uh, imagery, imagery was great. Big images, the deck was really great. I appreciate that, it was nice. Um, to, uh, so you get it frozen, does it cook it there or do you take it home and cook it? How does it work? I didn't fully understand. So um, I met with a group of engineers that are, got their masters at USC and kind of talked to them about how this would work. So our original idea was um, to, for it to come out hot. Um, they said that would be possible, but to keep our costs low, um, we, it will be frozen. Uh, we figured that our locations, though, it wouldn't be a problem to find a microwave. One, and two, the original assignment was a TV dinner, and when you think TV dinner, um, it's normally frozen. Could you have a microwave in the... Well, like, the okay, yeah. when you go to, like, a pharmacy, you keep going there and then going home. So the idea is that you're buying the food and then going home. But at these events and everything that we're going to be out there, we will cook the food, and we just want people to try it, and they'll be like, oh, this is frozen. You can go buy it at your local store. Okay, thank you. Have you considered a coin-operated microwave that would be by the side? <laughs> uh, we, could, we could look into that, yeah. Talk to my people. I love the idea of creating the extra meal occasions, you know, like this lunchtime mm -hmm. idea. So if I followed you on Instagram, what would I see? Really funny statuses. <laughs> and also on Instagram, um, it's another way for us to engage with um, our customers through who we are as a company, behind the scenes, us, um, where the food comes from. And at the events, too, it's a way for them to see, you know, we're at these events, um, these really fun events taking place um, all around, since we are mainly in Southern California, since we're only in Southern California, um, it's within a um, reasonable distance from um, who we're targeting. So they'll be able to see us at these events, food at these fun events. So it'll kind of be um, good for the event to attract more people and good for us because um, we'll be able to show us at these events. To so elaborate, sorry, one you second. Go. To elaborate on your question, um, following us on Twitter would enable you to see our uh, newest appetizer, our newest combinations, kind of what other people have been putting together, what tastes good. Because um, you, know, you, you essentially walk up to a machine and you pick between these tasteful appetizers and it comes out into a, a duo or a trio. Um, and it'd be kind of cool to see if um, people found something that went well together or if they have a suggestion. And by following us social media, which we find is most effective, um, that's what you would be saying. 